Christmas, Mrs. Elson. Merry Christmas, Joe. And a Merry Christmas, Mr. Fletcher. A Merry Christmas, Joe. Brad, do you think it's going to snow? I certainly hope not. Oh. But why do you want it to snow, for heaven's sake? Brad, it's Christmas. You say that as though it explains everything. Well, it does. Christmas is like magic. The only thing that can be said about Christmas is it's good for business. Oh, Brad. Come on, let's pick up Sonny at the day nursery. Oh, I'll be glad when it's all over. This Christmas drives people crazy. Now look at the way they rush around. Brad, I love what Christmas does to people. I love what it does to me. But it's so unintelligent, Julie, this emotional binge for a couple of days every year. Brad, I want to bring Sonny back so we can see the big tree and hear the carols. You can't mean it, Julie. If you bring that kid back here just to look at a tree, you're crazy. But it's wonderful to be crazy. Well, you won't catch me within a mile of it. If there's anything more depressing than a tank town crowd in holiday mood. You won't forget to pick up the other packages. No, I won't. It's beginning to snow. Oh, I just had the car polished. You keep it beautifully. I take good care of everything that belongs to me. Now, you'll soon belong to me, and don't you forget it. I won't. But if I do, you remind me. Like this? Sure you won't change your mind and come with us? No, I'll, I'll go get something to eat somewhere where it's quiet. I'll come over as soon as I've finished. Why don't you let me call you? I may have a little trouble getting Sonny off to bed with Santa coming. Julie, why do you insist on filling his head with all that silly fantasy? <laughs> Brad, dear, sometimes I wonder if we'll ever understand each other. Are you sure you want to marry me? Very much, Julie. I want to make you happy. I want to lift you out of that shabby little rut you're in. But, Brad, happiness is loving that shabby little rut because you've dug it together. It's doing silly little things together. Happiness has a secret wonder all its own. Just like Christmas. Mommy! Mommy! Hi, darling. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Say hello to Brad, Sonny. Hi, Brad. Hi, Sonny. Where are we going? Are we going to get me a Oh, uh, you uh, run along with Sonny. And you promise to phone me? I promise. Okay. I want a puppy, a black and white one. A black and white one? Come on, let's hurry. Okay. Mommy. Oh, Mommy. Now we're really cool in Christmas, aren't we, Mommy? Really, truly. I don't know, Sonny, but I hope so. How did you know my name is Sonny? Well, I was over there before you arrived. The tree whispered to me, Sonny's coming. How did you know it was me when you saw me? You see, the tree also told me that Sonny's mother would be wearing a sprig of holly. And it said that she might even be willing to part with it. Would you, Mommy? Thank you for my first Christmas present. Did you hurt your hand in the war? Funny. Yes, I hurt both of them. They don't look very pretty, but they work as well as ever. Santa Claus didn't trim this tree. How do you know? My teacher told me. Who did then? People. Just people. How do you know all this? My mommy told me. You have a wonderful mommy. Sure. What's your name? My name? Uh, John Doe or its equivalent. My mommy's name is Julie. Just Julie. No equivalent. It's a lovely name. May I wish you a Merry Christmas, Julie? Thank you. Merry Christmas to you, too. We have to go now. Get in bed before Santa gets there. 
Oh, well, good night. And thank you for sharing him with me. Good night. No, you come home with us, will you? Honey. Please, Mommy, can he come home with us and wait for Santa Claus, too? Sonny, I'm sure Mr. Doe probably has... You don't have anything to do, do you? Please? Well, all right, come on. We've had there almost a million things to do on Christmas Eve. <laughs> A sled, a cowboy suit, and a puppy. But most of all, dear Santa, I want a puppy. There. Now you sign it. Okay. There. Now I'll put it in my stocking where Santa will find it. That's my daddy. He went to war. He's not coming back. Now it's getting very late, dear. It's time you went to bed. It is getting late, isn't it? I'd better be running along. No, please don't go. I have to make a phone call, but we'll have some coffee first. It'll be too bad for you if Santa Claus catches you downstairs. That's right. Good night, Sonny. And thanks a lot for bringing me home with you. I guess I'll kiss you good night. That's a Christmas present I won't forget. Wouldn't surprise me if it's the best I ever had. Good night, Sonny. Good night. John said I gave him a Christmas present. Because you gave him that nice big hug. But that isn't a real Christmas present. Sonny, as you get older and wiser, you'll find that love is the only real present you can ever give. But I like John. I want to give him something nice. Do you think he would like this? Well, it's hard to tell. How about this? I know. I'll give him this for Christmas. Sonny, that's a lovely gift. I'm sure John will love it. Now it's time to say our prayers, don't you think? Shall I pray for the same things? Yes, the same things. And maybe a special prayer for Christmas. And remember, it's the birthday of the little Jesus. God bless me and make me a help to my mommy. And God bless Daddy, and God bless little Jesus. And dear God, please bless everybody, especially Mommy and uh, John Doe. Amen. That's nice. I'll get into bed. There you go. Sonny, are you sure you want to give this to John? Yes. What makes you so fond of him? Well, because I know him. Oh, I see. Go to sleep. Love you. Night. Thought I'd make myself useful. Well, good. How'd you happen to find everything? Ah, oh, just instinct, I guess. I can all... Sonny's Christmas present to you. It's his favorite toy. It's pretty soiled. You don't have to keep it, of course. I want it. I'd better go. Where do you go when you leave here? I don't know. I'm sorry I was so inquisitive. After all, when you said your name was John Doe, that was warning enough to mind my own business, wasn't it? Julie. I'm sorry, Mr. Doe. That's not my name. 
This isn't even my face. I don't know who I am. I don't know where I came from. They found me in a ditch. My clothes were blown off, even my dog tag's gone. The flesh was burned from my hands and face. In the hospital, they wrote John Doe on the chart while they gave me new hands and face. Yesterday, they gave me clothes and money and discharged me. I'm all equipped to live again, but they can't tell me who I am. No fingerprints, Julie, and no memory. It's all right with you. I'd like to trim the Christmas tree. Are you any good at putting the lights on? That's my specialty. Good. They're right in that box. I'll bet you forgot to get extra bulbs. Nope. They're all in there. Excuse me. Julie, why didn't you phone me? I did. You weren't at home. Don't tell me Sonny's still up at this hour. Oh, he's too excited to sleep. Well, I'll see he gets to bed. No, Brad, please. It would only excite him more. But, Julie, do you know what time it is? It's 9.30. Well, if you think it's too late, why don't you come back in the morning and have breakfast with us? This is a friend of mine, Mr. Doe. Not uh, John Doe, by any chance. <laughs> Yes, John Doe, and quite by chance. It's very cozy. Brad, let me explain. Well, let me explain to you, Brad. You can't explain a thing. It was that man that kept you from phoning me, not Sonny. I did call you. This wasn't planned. It just, it just happened because, well, because it was Christmas Eve. You lied to me. I didn't lie to you, Brad, if you'll only listen to I me. I wouldn't listen to anything you said now. That was the man I was going to marry. I'm sorry, John. About what? It must have been embarrassing for you. Did you love him? I don't know. I was so amazed that anyone would want me after Bob was killed. I was grateful to Brad. He was giving us a chance for a home. It wouldn't have worked out, would it? For you or for Sonny? No. May I talk to you about Bob? Of course, it's important to remember. We were very much in love. I was 19 when we were married, 20 when Sonny was born. I was 23 when Bob got his wings. I was still 23 when word came that his plane had been shot down. I've lived with his memory ever since. So close. And then when I met you tonight, I had the wild, crazy hope that Bob would come back to me. Julie, I'm not your Bob. I would know what I'm sure. I know. But it was the things you did. Taking my holly from me. Loving Sonny's old Santa Claus doll. Lighting a fire. And your tenderness. The way you spoke to Sonny. When I asked him why he loved you, he said, because I know him. It's Christmas Eve. And I wanted to believe in a miracle. I wanted the holly because you had worn it. I wanted the Santa Claus doll because... It, it, it seemed to remind me of something, I don't know what. And I fell in love with Sonny. Surely you don't need an explanation for that. Good King Venceslas comes next. 
No. It only plays Jingle Bells. But I remember. What do you remember, John? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Why did you come to Hillsdale, John? Funny thing about that. I was on the train and through the window I saw that big tree in town square. Boy, I grabbed my hat and hopped off that train as though I had a date with... with Christmas. I've got to know who I am and where I came from. I thought I could build a life without a past right from scratch, but I can't. I've got to know so many things. I've got to know now. Why now? Suppose I have a wife somewhere. And a little boy like Sonny. You will remember, John. Memory lives in your soul, and they didn't hurt your soul. And memory lives in your heart. That's what prompted you to get off the train when you saw the big tree. There must be something deep down inside of you that responds to Christmas. What do you remember about Christmas, John? Was there snow at Christmas time? Or was it warm and sunny? Do you like family Christmases the best? I don't know that I ever had one. Well, there's always a big tree, and it's loaded with ornaments and presents. Sometimes it's strung with popcorn or cranberries. Sometimes the stockings are hung from the mantelpiece. Or sometimes from the foot of the bed. There's a happy warmth that comes over everyone at Christmas time because you love everything and everybody. People you hardly ever see, you see at Christmas. Uncles and aunts, mothers, fathers, grandparents, and always the children. There's a great big table, as big as you can make it, with all the leaves put in. And it's loaded with jams and jellies and turkeys and a holly centerpiece. And people are laughing and talking. They all come trooping into the big table and sit down together and... It... No, they didn't troop in together. They crowd into the cocktail lounge. They laughed too loudly and they drank too much. But they ate a Christmas dinner. At little tables, tycoons, and diplomats, and celebrities, and the lonely people. Sometimes the lonely people stayed in their staterooms. On a ship? Yes. Go on, John. We always had a suicide or an attempt at suicide at Christmas time among the lonely ones. Was it a big ship? A floating palace. There were not many children on the Christmas crossings, but I remember one little boy and his governess, and he had a music box that played jingle bells. And then good King Wenceslas. Yes. And he gave me a... He gave me a little old Santa Claus doll. Something like this one. It became my mascot, and when I joined the service, I tacked it over my instrument board. And I call my plane the Merry Christmas. Oh, John. My name is John. John Porter. I was purser on an American luxury liner, New York to Sherburg. Was there a wife? Not yet. Mommy! He's awake. Just a minute, I'll be right there. Did Santa Claus come yet? Did he, Julie? Yes. I think that maybe he has. I know darn well he has. Come on. Mommy! Did Santa Claus come yet? 
No, not yet, but in a little while. Do you think you'll really bring me my puppy? <laughs> of course, you'll get your puppy, son. All Santa Claus will leave an order at the pet shop for you to pick up whatever you want. What kind? I hope it's a hunting dog, a black and white one. One black and white hunting dog coming up. John, how can you tell if our puppy will be a good hunting dog? Well, first of all, he's got to have a big, deep chest so he doesn't get tired in the trails. He's got to have good, strong bones and a nice, healthy coat to keep him warm and dry. But most of all, he's got to have a good nose. What's a good nose? Well, that's another story for another day. Gee, you know a lot about dogs, don't you, John? A few things. Come on now, you better lie down and go to sleep there. There you are. He's a wonderful boy. Julie, you took me in a stranger deprived of a past, bewildered by the present and uncertain of the future. What are you going to do with me now? Oh, John. If you'll let us. We'll love you forever. Let you. Let Julia stop snowing. The snow makes everything so beautiful. Lovely new world. There's the star. It brought the promise of a miracle. Our star. Tonight has seen a miracle, too. Well, this is what we've always known, isn't it? Christmas is a miracle. And it always will be.